And welcome back to another episode of Long Winder. And today on Long Windered, we have another packed full of shit. Nothing really important to say episode. And I'm glad you're having me back, honestly. Um, it means a lot. Okay, and now we're really back. Oh, we have we have so many, so many unimportant things to talk about, and I cannot wait to get some things off of my chest. Where do I start? I'm insufferable. That's the word on the street. She's attention starved and desperate, and I can't stand her anymore. And thank God, <gasps> finally. Finally, finally, I'm creating a stir. Every This is all I ever want to do, all I ever want to be, all because I spoke about my experience on a tour bus, sleeping on a triple decker. Yes, the moment I, the moment I started pulling G's from the top of the tour bus, I, I will not shut the fuck up about it. It's ingrained into my memory. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. And yes, I'll talk about it. But people are mad. They're mad because I have an opinion. And you know what? She should be grateful. This is some kind of a language that that I'm reckoning with. IRL, these days, the idea you should be grateful. Hmm. One, are we only telling women we should be grateful? Sorry, yeah, I had to go there immediately. Because I feel like a man can complain. But no, a woman has got to be grateful. You should you should be grateful. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I am grateful for a lot of things. And yeah, I am really giving. And and yeah, I bought like five or six teachers wish lists and post them on my Instagram. And then I saw other influencers doing the same. And yeah, I am grateful for a lot of things. But I can also speak honestly about my experience. You don't like that. No, you don't want to hear it. No celebrities can't work hard. First of all, you think I'm a celebrity? Thank you. Second of all, you think I'm laying around lazily with my thumb up my ass all day? Thank you. No, it doesn't fit. Because my thumbs have an extra large diameter. Unlike my asshole, if you're wondering. Lost my train of thought already because I'm stuck on the visual of my thumb up my ass, which it will never be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Celebrities don't know how to work hard. This is what happens. They're soft. Oh, oh, you think I'm soft? When I was working 80 hours a week overnight as a FEMA nurse, ever heard of it? Government relief aid for a state of emergency. In the COVID pandemic, taking care of your Mima and Papa, wiping their ass and brushing their teeth, and giving them bed baths. My pleasure. Oh, I don't work hard. What have you done lately? From your from your WFH cushy, ergonomically correct office chair. That, that's that's supporting your sciatica. You know, a dance girl really can't do that for you. So please, please uh, spare me. Or don't. I don't care because I love this stir. You know I love to see it. I'm, it, it, I'm incredibly jealous of Call Her Daddy that she is Trump's enemy number one. She's Trump's first enemy, and I wish it was me. You cannot get that. You cannot pay for that kind of press. For a presidential candidate like Trump to speak your name at a rally or whatever kind of thing he was doing, it's like I tr- I wish it was me. I really do. Because you know what? 
you know what, before all this started, I was going to start with how you can pay to get your name in Forbes, which if you ever see me there, yeah, I paid for it. And yeah, I'm not ashamed of it. Okay. I don't know if you have to get an offer, if you can just weasel your way in. Um, I don't have that kind of money yet. I'm just letting you guys know, but I do get DMS from people who think I do have that kind of money. They're like, we can get you. You just have, but, and, and it's like, "Mm, not, I don't really want to be there yet. No. I maybe want to be on 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 the cover of High Snobiety. I can keep my name out of Forbes. Everyone will know it's a lie. You see everything about me, okay? You see me posting videos from my poorly lit living room every other day. I'm not fooling anybody. Yeah, I don't know. People are mad at at Kamala for going on a podcast when there's a hurricane. It's like, I don't really know the ins and outs of of one person physically being there. I know she also is trying to win the presidential election, which who the fuck knows which way it's going to go. Obviously, I have my hopes, but we've been lied to before. What are the polls? Who are they polling? I've never been asked who I'm voting for. By, by an official press outlet who says this 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 answer will go on CNN and what you see are the polls. We've been lied to before. Had, did we land on the moon? I don't know. Does it matter? The government has lied to us in many other ways. Who the fuck are the polls? No, like nobody knows. So, so yeah, I, I don't. I hope she's doing her due diligence as the VP to be actively involved in this relief aid. I don't know the protocol. What the fuck is Biden doing? Has everyone forgotten that he's still the president of our country? I have. I feel we do not have a president. Um I we're in this this state where we don't know who's running our country. He seems to be sundowning every night. As the sun goes down, he needs to be put to bed. We haven't seen or heard from him in a really long time. Does he have a bottle, body double? Is he pulling a Putin? Who knows? Nobody talks about him. Nobody really talks about him, but he was running for president just a couple months ago. So anyways, the hurricanes are devastating, are disastrous, natural disasters, are just what they sound. They're they're a disaster. What what's happening? Global warming. It's like it's it's so sad that something you cannot control can just like wipe out your entire life. You know what people are also pissed about? Besides me being a celebrity and needing attention. Duh, I never got any as a child. Here we are. Who doesn't? People are also pissed about Taylor Swift donating $5 million to the hurricane relief. What? What? Who? What other billionaire is donating $5 million? Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. I won't, I don't really say, I won't say his name because I, I, I don't know the future of Mark Cuban coming on the pod. He did say to email him, but I have been busy with other things. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So I can't, I can't, you guys, you know, I have to look out for my future self, but we, but it's like, uh, what, what are you mad about? What are you mad about that? She donated a large sum of money. I don't care if you don't like her music. So what, you have bad taste? So so what, she's a, she's a little messy, immature in the media. I do not know what the fuck she's doing with sparkles on her face at the Chiefs game, but she is donating $5 million to people in need. I don't know what you can be mad about, that it wasn't enough. What are, And speaking of, speaking of, I get nervous to donate to these big kind of, I like direct-to-consumer. About those teachers' wish lists, they're going right into their pocket. They're getting the benefits. We know it. It's shipping right to their door. I got all their addresses. And I especially bought the ones that needed things for themselves, like a nice rug, a nice bookcase, because because teachers are not paid enough. They also need to feel good with with these things on Amazon. 
So that was important. I I want to donate to Direct Pockets to like a GoFundMe. We'll put some links at the bottom of this, some reputable ones that we know the organization isn't siphoning, laundering money to themselves and giving directly back to the community. It's just ridiculous. Anyways, um... So how's that on a Thursday morning? I'm wearing my first turtleneck of the season. It's turt season. It's turt season. My head is turtling out. It's turt season. It's tootin' season. What if I just what if I just let one rip? What if I just ripped ass right into this microphone? What if I just shit my pants on camera into the mic? for tart season and tootin' season. You're lucky. You're lucky I have some, some shrivel of dignity left. That I don't actively try and squeeze one out to shart on my vintage bell bottoms for shock value. I cannot promise I won't do it in the future. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Nardo's brought me three of his toys and he's insanely on my nerves. Sit. Sit, Nardo. Sit. Sit. For all of the winders everywhere, please sit the fuck down. Sit. S- okay, great. Here he is. I know he's right in frame. His big ass head. <sighs> okay. Okay, yeah. Other than that, um... Got to make sure I'm recording. That's my worst nightmare. Other than that, I've been traveling a lot. You, what, what, who even cares what that means? It's just something people say, oh, I've been traveling. Oh, 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 I've been, oh, I've been traveling. But I have. You guys know I've been back and forth to New York in vain. Um, I went to Regina, Saskatchewan. Canada was very excited when I posted from the inside of the Calgary airport. Mind you, very cool, very clean, very Euro. I like Canada because it really feels like you're in a different country, which obviously you are. Nobody stamped my passport, which is so fucking annoying because I don't have any proof I'm a world traveler. Immediately, I feel like when you touch down, there's like an An air, I won't say of anti-capitalism, I won't say of socialism, even though I think they are more of a socialistic country. I don't don't exactly know what that means, except that they have free health care, and that is a great part of socialism. Um, I feel like you, it's just like different. It's vibes, vibes are different. Capitalistic vibes are different. They're like on, they're on a lower frequency. It feels like people aren't as stressed. It feels like people are just comfortable, just like living their lives. Like people, I mean, this this is what really felt anti-capitalistic is that they were working on what I can only assume are their laptops given to them by the company. They weren't max and they were like a little thick on the bottom. You, so, so you know they're not having to reach into their own pockets to provide themselves with the technology to do their job Monday through Friday on their Google spreadsheets. Rabbi says they work 36 hours a week, so they don't call them 40-hour weeks. They call them 36s. Love that. Because they're, because they're not forced to go back. Or, or they don't have to count their lunch break or whatever. I know it just feels like oh, everyone's a little less desperate. Could not relate. Cannot relate. I'm as desperate as they come. Desperado. Desperella. Desperonica. Yours truly. I'm, I'm, I'm fully in the game of life. I'm locked in. I'm, this, this is my sin's character. Pissed off, attention starved, insufferable, and desperate. I just don't know if this exists in Canada. It really felt like it didn't. I felt really relaxed, actually, in my layover. They had these cute-ass little shuttles driving you. They're like, it's a 10-minute walk, or you can pop onto the shuttle. 
obviously I'm taking the shuttle one for the experience of it all. Wind was blowing in my hair. It felt very Addison Ray Diet Pepsi. All I needed was a cone bra and wings. I only recently started investing because I feel like no one really talked about it. Yeah, I know what a 401k is. And yeah, I know my partner will have one. But for me, sure, I have some leftovers from my time as an ICU nurse, but I wasn't really using it to its full advantage. I feel like there's shame around money and there's a lack of education regarding saving money and planning for the future, especially for women. Re only recently got access to credit cards, like not that long ago. Rabbi and I have gotten really comfortable talking about money and we both want to be smart and start planning for the future, our future, ASAP. So then I started to become more serious about investing. Acorns make it easy to start automatically saving and investing for your future. You don't need a lot of money or expertise to invest with Acorns. In fact, you can get started with just your spare change. Acorns recommends an expert-built portfolio that fits you and your money goals, then automatically invests your money for you. Acorns has made it easy to start thinking about the future and planning to invest because unfortunately I am getting older by the second and please don't repeat that. Head to acorns.com slash Gabby Wendy or download the Acorns app to start saving and investing for your future today. Paid non-client endorsement compensation provides incentive to positively promote Acorns. Investing involves risk. Acorns Advisors, LLC, and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. View important disclosures at acorns.com slash Gabby Wendy. I love fall for so many reasons, but one is definitely because of the cuisine. I'm into root vegetables and gourds. Hit me with some acorn squash, pumpkin, zucchinis, et cetera, et cetera. But my absolute fave fall dish is soup. That's right. I'm a big soup girl. I always say I don't even need teeth to enjoy my favorite foods because they're all slurpable. Cooking mushroom soup has never been so easy and guilt-free than with Caraway. I say guilt-free because Caraway brings you peace of mind with their non-toxic cookware that's free of dangerous chemicals. Robbie and I love to spend the holidays together, and she makes her famous stew, which we can eat for days at a time, and it's made best with Caraway. Caraway's internet-famous cookware set comes with the saucepan, fry pan, and Dutch oven, plus lids for all of them, a canvas lid holder and magnetic pan rack for storage. There's nothing I love more at my ripe old age of late 20 something than an organized kitchen. So Caraway had me at magnetic pan rack. Ditch the chemicals with Caraway. Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware features a chemical-free ceramic coating so food can be prepared with peace of mind. Visit carawayhome.com slash Gabby Wendy to see all of our favorite products and take an additional 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash Gabby Wendy or use Gabby Wendy at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Which, like, Addison Ray is objectively hot, but something about it still feels predatorial, I'm gonna be honest. I think I think it's because, and it's really of no fault of their own, and probably because I'm a little older, it's like the kids of her generation are growing up with her, but I feel like we just saw her on TikTok maybe underaged. And now it's like these music videos are like, are like zoom in, shot of the taint while she's upside down in a straddle. It's like, was this her vision or is there a creepy director on set that that is controlling the lens and this was their idea? I don't know. It feels exploitive. Kind of same with Tate McRae just being topless in her video and having it blurred out. It's like, do we need to go this far for some kind of attention? Charlie XCX, I don't know if she's ever been topless. Yeah, she leads with like a lot of sex appeal. She's also almost in her 30s. It feels it just feels different. Anyway, anyways, you guys know I have a lot to say about pop stars. Okay. So, so I went to Regina, Saskatchewan. Um, you guys know rhymes with vagina. Everybody, everybody in my DMs was like, it's the city of fun. It's the city that rhymes with fun. And I was like, 
That's pretty good. <laughs> um I met I met a lot of Robbie's family and I was pretty nervous. She was really nervous. She's like, I'm just sure you're gonna break up with me after this. I'm like, why? But no, everyone was like, she comes from a really bonded family. She's you guys know she's one of ten. And like everyone was just like really warm and welcoming and just yeah, really bonded with each other. It's like I don't know. It was, I guess it was so nice to see this, like, kind of the security. She has insecurity in other ways. Um, Because, like we've said before, she grew up really poor. Um, Which is just, like, she talks about this. But, yeah, with all this, like, election going on and all these disasters, it's like, I think Sarasota was affected, like, which is an affluent place. But it's like... You know that the piece, the the people mostly affected affected are the lower income, like disadvantaged, which is just so sad because because how do they rebuild everything? It's really just it's just unfair. She's always like, it is not a crime being poor, and I'm like, totally, it's not anything you can control. It's just like that that this you know, there's poor people in our country. What the fuck is anyone gonna do about that? Mark Cuban. I hope he comes on. I have a lot. To, I have. I'm going to hit him with. What a good last name. I got to butter him up first. Um, You've done well for yourself. And what are you doing about the, the relief aid with the hurricanes? And what are we doing about the poor people in our country? And what are you going to do for me? Um, so, okay, so yeah, so we went to Rajoon, we add everything with, with an oon, we're like Skamoon, Skamanda, all the landlords out here, it's, it's, you guys, I feel like I'm on a loop, and there's just, it's just Skamoon, Skamanda, Scamaroni after Scamaroni, these rent prices are insane, the boomers are ruining, are ruining our lives, with the with the prices of these rent because we know that they literally bought their house for the price of two blueberries maybe a raspberry it's like honestly uh, we talk shit about them me myself but it's like they it was like easy for them to live a prosperous life and good for fucking them that should be the case but now they're actively ruining ours with these rent prices it's like do you need to price gouge does anyone have a conscience here for 6900 you can get this 1200 square foot place with no natural light and comes furnished with with our run of the mill f- furniture that makes you look like you know you know you know no character Robbie and I like to like to shop for vintage, like to shop for pieces that make us feel something. I so rarely get to feel anything anymore. I'm dead inside after seeing all these stupid fucking houses. And they don't even tell you they're furnished until you get there. They're like, oh, most people want a furnished place. That's gaslighting. You're making me question my own reality. You are a gaslighter. I'm going to start calling out gaslighting in real time now. I'm, I'm one... I'm one gaslit away from exposing them in real time to you and I, just so you know, you're making me question my own reality and that is the definition of gaslighting and I cannot take it anymore. No, I don't want your furnished place. We're attached to our own furniture and you're renting this place for near $7,000. You're telling me you cannot afford a storage unit. Are you, are, are we on the same planet right now? Or are you on the Mars of delusion ruining it for everybody? And I'm, and I'm keeping a close eye on you on Zillow and you cannot rent your place. And again, that helps me sleep at night. This is now my favorite social media interaction is tracking these clowns of a landlord not being able to rent their place. We got it. We had another scum, another scum we walked into. It was a great place. We were we were really interested 
and we don't know until we get on the phone. I think I told you guys. I don't know if I told you. We get on the phone with him. We're like, okay, trying to trying to negotiate the price down because inevitably these people start so high because they think other people are starting so high and then they have got to come down because we, the power and the people, cannot succumb and nobody can afford it. We're on the phone negotiating the price. I let Robbie take this one, which like I've been handling a lot of the front facing things now for obvious reasons. <laughs> He's like, well, I really want to make sure, you know, we can we can form some kind of relationship with our tenants immediate. No, I do not ever want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I like to live a private life. This it is feeling like I'm on a loop and I don't care. Maybe I've said this before. He goes on to say, I go out of town and the current tenants sit my cat. No. No, I'm not signing up for a lease where within 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 the lease terms I have to cat sit. I don't even like you. You're wearing parachute pant capris. Um Oh, this is good. This is really good. You know, and because we're one property, the city built, or it's on one plot of land. There's two properties. The city builds us together. So the current tenants and I, they've they've been here forever. He says they've been here forever. We have an incredible relationship. We're sitting each other's, we're sitting each other's cats. We're probably making out on the weekends. We're swinging this. We're swinging that. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I cannot be bothered to ask any questions. I don't want to know anymore. This seems incestual on a way that I should not be privy to. A lot of times, a lot of times I just do not need to know. I'm not really nosy. I like to protect my own peace. That goes along with my Capricorn son, which I will get into later. I do want to talk about astrology. Anyways, he's like, we settled on the price that they'll just pay me $600 a month for utilities. Are you insane? The air conditioner wasn't even on when we stepped foot. So we're like, no, thank you. Not interested. Uh, Robbie starts hammer texting him clown emojis. <laughs> She's like, the air conditioner wasn't even on when we went in there. And he's like, it's really expensive to cool the place. She's like, clown emoji. He's like, we share the driveway. She's like, clown emoji. <laughs> I'm like, please don't. I cannot be privy to his, to to this. And and he liked it. He was like laughing. Men love to be berated. People people are like, don't turn into a man hater. It's like, sorry, I was born this way. Second of all, they fucking love it. Don't be afraid. They don't care. My followers of men actively increases. I don't know that for a fact. Um. So really. So, so speaking of, so on this episode of how the fuck do men figure on how, where in the depths of hell are they getting the audacity? I was on a flight. I got to take a sip. Bet you didn't like that ASMR. Um, I was on a flight. I it was. I don't know why I didn't pick my seat. I've been really good about that lately because I've been flying so much that I learned I actually do like the aisle. When I was younger and could really sleep on flights, I liked the window. Obviously, I probably was in a different state of health. I just was not hydrating myself anymore. Back then, my kidneys were, you know, my little beans were probably really shriveled up, desperate for any kind of hydration. Now I try and give them what they need. So I need the aisle seat because I hate to ask people to get up. I try to interact the, the, the less amount that I can least amount that I can. Anyways, I was in the middle. I was like, how the fuck did I let this happen? Just negligence. Um, But luckily, I was in between a couple. They asked me to switch. They're like, do you want the window? I'm like, honestly, I'll take anything to get out of this middle seat. I went to the window. This 
middle-aged man chose to sit, sit next to me pervert immediately. Please put your wife. We'll have way more to talk about. We'll have a lot more in common. Uh, I don't want to sit next to you. He said, I have a layover in Minneapolis. People are way more talkative. You know, the Midwest, they want to know everything. And so, I, you know, I think I was on a swing of of a low. So I was feeling for once in my life, pretty good. I'll entertain this guy. This went down. Those are my first problems. Stick to what I know. This went down south really fast. I'm going to warn you. He's offering to put my my luggage up in the cabin. Duh, I'm not going to say no. Uh, I am a woman after all. Yes, I do need to be taken care of. This is the least you could do for oppressing me for so many years. Um, It's nice. He's touching on my things. He's like offering me a piece of gum, a snack. The, the service cart comes by. He's like, can I get, you know, passing me chips and things like that. But I'm like, no, 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 please. I just had a 12 nug meal from Chick-fil-A with Chick-fil-A sauce. I'm actively, I'm actively fighting against bubble gut to turn into raging diarrhea. I got to work on my mental send signals to my colon to not explode. I'm fine on the snacks. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm trying to get a little work done. So, uh, I'm alert. I'm, I'm really alert. My therapist calls me hypervigilant. She's like, wow, you're very clinical. I can pick up on things really fast. It could be, it could be my nursing background. It could be my Capricorn adjunct Pluto Venus. Something like that. You guys know I'm new to astrology and And I'm really leaning in, but I, there's a lot to know. Anyways, there's something in there that makes me really hypervigilant. I just learned about it. I'm always on edge. I know what the fuck is going on around me. All of a sudden, his, eh, there's a rustle going around his, his seatbelt, his, his real belt area near his little dicky. Grown man digging in his pants. It took two to three milliseconds to get there. This is not the first time he's done this before. His other hand was working the TV. His right hand was rustling in his pants. That's it. That's enough. Siggy season's over. However, the Sig Mommy lives on forever. And you know what's V Sig Mommy of us? Fume. Fume is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking. It's a whole new movement toward Better Habits, led by the sponsor of today's video, Fume. At some point, we have to leave the SIGs behind us, but we don't have to leave all the fun. What if I was to tell you there's a better alternative that helps you kick your bad habit in an enjoyable way, something you can take out with you? Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, fume cores are closer to herbal teas. Fume has lots of delicious flavors to choose from, like crisp mint and orange vanilla. With flavored air, you can satisfy your oral fixation through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, vapor, or combustion. Take that. Fume fills the void, ditching a bad habit can leave, and you still have something to reach for. Fume is not a vape, so there's no vapor, so you can use it anywhere and don't have to blow the smoke into your shirt like a fiend. We're civilized now. My favorite flavor is crisp mint because it tastes literally just like a breath of fresh air. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code GABBYWINDY to get a free gift with your journey pack. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code GABBYWINDY or scan the QR code on screen to get a free gift with your order today. I love to cook. And I love a carb. Sue me. You know, by now I hate exercising, but I do do 12, 3, 30 anyways. And with Hero, I can eat bread without all the carbs. One in the same, really. I love a burger. I'm always craving an In-N-Out, Shake Shack, Five Guys, you name it, I want it. And I have a great turkey burger recipe to make at home when I'm wanting to be quote unquote Good. You know what goes great with the turkey burger? Hero's Hawaiian rolls. They're extremely tasty and sweet and have the perfect amount of fluff to them. 
That's because Hero Bread is fluffy, delicious, and has the best texture with no net carbs, zero grams of sugar, and fewer calories, plus protein and fiber. We love to hear it. Robbie and I try and eat healthy when we can, which commonly means cooking at home and making healthy snacks and lunches. Hero Bread is perfect for a protein pack sandwich at home or even a picnic lunch if you're feeling romantic or a road trip if you're feeling adventurous. Something for every craving, including sliced bread loaves, buns, and tortillas, mouthwatering limited edition bakes like the popular two gram net carb hero croissant. Keep carbs out without compromising flavor with Hero Bread. Get 10% off your order at hero.co and use code Gabby at checkout. That's Gabby at H E R O dot C O. I have my finger actively on the trigger of the call bell, getting about ready to call the flight attendant for a felony that is masturbation in public. I don't know what the fuck this guy's doing, but he seems really brave. Putting my bags in the cabin, asking me to, asking to pass chip, sun chips to me. No. No, I don't know why you're so aggressive with me. And you have some sort of expertise at, at digging in your private parts. I I don't notice I don't notice what I can, what the first thing to come to mind is uh, the shake weight motion. You remember that phallic excuse for an exercise? People are sick. People are sick and twisted and distorted in the head with the shake weight. What in the fuck? And I'm going to go out on a limb and say their target audience was, was men gay? And then women. We thought it was funny. No. Again, like, what is going on? I quickly come to realize that he's itching his, what I assume, yeasty ass, fungal-ridden ball sack that I should not know anything about as a civilian, innocent, stranger passenger on an airplane. I know he's sniffing his balls at this moment in time because he quickly sniffs them. His fingers. His ball-ridden fingers and one swift motion. If you weren't paying attention, you, you would miss it. This is how much of an expert, this is how frequently he does this, is that he has this whole maneuver down pat five to seven seconds. Am, am I a coward and not saying anything? But how, but sometimes, sometimes you just have to ex- accept when there's no hope. He's not wanting to help himself. I'm not going to help him. I can't get involved in this deeply disturbed man to think it is actually okay to give his balls a light scratch in a public area. I'm three inches away from him. We're sharing an armrest. And he doesn't do it just once. He's back and forth. He's back and forth. He's back and forth. He's back and forth. He's scratching and sniffing. He's scratching and sniffing. This, 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 this is the original Hallmark card. You know, when you can scratch and sniff some roses. Please, please, someone get this guy some arm and hammer. Please get this guy some Lamotrin. Or whatever the fuck it's called for athlete's foot. Please get this guy a shower. You know, you know what is the cure for jock itch? Is a good long shower mixed with some soap. And this isn't the first grown man I've had an encounter with that has gotten jock itch right before my eyes. I've told you guys, I had a very close family member who texted me about a rash in his inguinal area. And I was like, have you showered lately? And he said no. And I was like, please don't talk to me ever again with this kind of an issue. My nursing degree should be worth more than this.
Honestly, I'm speechless. Uh, honestly, I'm I'm deader inside than I ever have been. I shit you not. I stared into the back of my seat for a good 10 minutes disassociating. I don't know where to go from here. This is my reality. This is the state of my life. This is what I'm dealing with. I don't even know where to start to unpack this. I don't even know where to go to process. I have no choice but to stare into the abyss of this light navy blue airplane seat on a Delta flight. In economy, I'm a good person. I've done nothing to you besides sleep in a triple-decker bus and talk about it. First of all, I've been saying that story since the moment I stepped off the bus. This is not new because because Dancing with the Stars is popping off right now. You wish. We land. He offers me a piece of Orbit. I take it. I had cotton mouth. I've been on the flight for, for four hours chugging Chick-fil-A sauce. What is a girl supposed to do? I've honestly had worse things in my mouth, I'm sure. So with uh, with that being said, absolutely no repercussions. Here we are. I'll let you stew on that for just a second and move into the next thing. Um, somebody asked me once, they're like, can you just talk about some embarrassing moments because I know you have some good ones? And I'm like, honestly, I try not to be embarrassed. Um, but naturally, I am human. My heart's beating. I'm a woman of this world. I've been embarrassed. I'm on my period right now. Every time that time of the month comes, you know, these days I'm a free bleeder. I'm really into my feminism. I'm scooping it up and wiping it on the walls. I'm not ashamed of my uterus lining, shedding every fucking month. No, no. In fact, it makes me feel like the first time I took a prednisone, one of my favorite drugs. It's a double-edged sword because prednisone does have side effects like making your skin thin. It it decreases your immune system, but every chance I get to take a prednisone, I take it. You know I'm in there asking for steroids. I have some kind of um, cyst on my wrist. I forget what it's called. It's been there forever. I honestly think it's from years of my hard work. Let me emphasize hard work. Years of being an ICU nurse. Taking care of grandmama. Waiting at her beck and call and saving her life with vasopressors, keeping her heart beating, gave me a ganglion cyst. That's the name. Celebrities don't know what hard work is like. Literally, literally, I wish that was true. Truly, for for anybody and for everybody. Uh my ganglion cyst um, flares up when I'm stressed naturally. So on The Bachelorette, it was huge. It was huge. I couldn't buckle my pants. Kiki had to buckle my pants for me. She had to put in all my e- earrings. She had to button up my shirts. I had I had no autonomy. I didn't hate it. I'm like, okay, okay, actually, this is the highest form of self-care is when somebody else buckles your jeans. Uh, but I truly was helpless, so we called in the show doctor. He gave me a steroid. I could have picked up the Bachelor Mansion with a singular pinky and put it down some six inches away. That's what prednisone makes you feel like. So obviously, if I ever get the chance to take it, I jump on the opportunity. Anyways... This is, this is, it's like, you know, a sneeze to an orgasm. This is a prednisone to, I'm sure, cocaine. The first time you do cocaine, 
all the times after that never lives up to the first time. Really, it's true. It's true for it's true for a lot of things. It's true for a lot of substances. It's true for a lot of experience. The second time does not quite compare to the first. My least favorite drug. If people are like, I love cocaine. I'm like, red flag. Not interested. Grow up. Grow up. Be an adult. Try a hallucinogenic. Okay? Open up your fucking mind, you crackhead. But you guys know I don't judge. Um. Anyways, so I'm on my period. Uh, I got a rush to find a Ralph's because I'm having period diarrhea in a Ralph's. Excuse me, what's the code? I'm gushing out of two of the three orifices of my pelvic region. I need the fucking code. Um, okay, but in some ways it makes me feel very empowered. I am a woman. This is happening to only me. So... Every time I start my period, I bleed through my pajama pants, my sweatpants, onto the sheets. It's honestly a good thing because it's really the only thing that keeps me washing my sheets. It is it is, is my one downfall. Robbie really likes to wash the sheets, though, so we bounce each other out. So I think about all the times I've bled through on my pants before. It's just like – it's like you know how your olfactory system triggers memories – I don't know if you guys know this, but nonetheless, I teach you something every time I come. Um, Maybe I'll start charging one day. Until then, the podcast is free. Um, Okay, so it's kind of like a smell triggers a strong memory. My period triggers strong memories. So, So I was in high school. I was in ninth grade. Mrs. Sheppy's algebra. I fuck with algebra. A, a squared plus B squared equals C fucking squared. Never forget it. Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Name a more fun word to say Pythagorean theorem. Anyways, I'm fucking with algebra. I got a friend behind me. He's like, okay, maybe I was in 10th grade. Because he was a year younger than me. So he was in ninth grade. Short king, hilarious. The short ones have to make up for their personalities. Um, I was always into the funnies. Okay, so he is always trying to flirt with me, mind you, out of his league, always. But but he's making jokes, sitting behind me. We're having a good time. I feel what what. I could only imagine is is what the Niagara Falls cliffs feel when the big rush of the waterfall comes down. In my pants, I'm wearing my favorite velour yellow pastel sweatpants. I wear them once a week. They hang just right, um, perfectly cropped at the bottom, and they're comfortable. We get maybe 250 cc's of uterine blood gushing out. I'm in high school. I'm like, fuck, I think I know what's going on here. Instead of waiting it out because there's nothing really you can do, um, you know, but I don't want to sit in a pile of my own blood because I was born this way. I go to the bathroom. I make sure to... I'm not walking backwards to the bathroom, so I'm sitting in the front, thank God. Well, not even thank God. I wish I was in the back. I'm like, okay, can I go to the bathroom? There's been, there's been an emergency. Code red. Nobody can see me because I'm walking from the front. Thank God. I'm sure the teacher knows what's going on by now. So I'm like, okay, great. Where do I go from here? I go to the school nurse. What does she do besides give me an oversized hoodie? It's like, honestly, the school nurse should have an assortment of, uh, there was like a rule that you couldn't wear sweatpants. I don't know if that's still, still a rule. No sweatpants, no spaghetti straps. I don't think sweatpants are inherently sexual. Maybe for their dudes because we don't want their dick print blinding my fucking eyes in 10th grade. 
So maybe, so maybe actually there is some credibility to that rule. Doubt it though. Doubt it. It's probably just a way to keep women down. Anyways, there should be a pile of sweatpants of various different options, uh, leggings, purple filler, juicy couture, champion. I don't know. There, there should be a, a fail safe for young girls starting their period in school where they're eight hours a day. Obviously, this is going to happen. She gives me a disgusting oversized sweatshirt. I remember looking at myself in the mirror and being like, this, this is your canon event. This is your gateway to feminism. We are meant to wipe our periods all over the, the walls. Devil horns. Fuck you. Fuck the patriarchy. Written in red blood. Before I go home to chain smoke a pack of Marlboro Smooths at 15 years old, I go back in and wipe off the seat. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really know. I guess... I guess it's nice, but it's like it's like I was kind of mortified and and I didn't even have a change of pants. So as I was at my low, I had to clean up my own shit. I don't know. I don't know. I guess who else is to do that? The school nurse put on a pair of gloves. But the teacher was like, that's really mature of you. I don't want to be mature. I'm sick of being mature and I'm sick of being grateful. I'm not, you guys. I'm really grateful these days. My relationship is an amazing place. I love Rabbi to death. I wish she could come home from tour already and give me some fucking attention. There were nieces at the family reunion. Cute as a button. We gave them lots of attention. Robbie's so good with kids. But it's like she was like kissing on him, hugging on him. And I'm like, what the fuck about me? Like that's that is how I know that I cannot have kids. I would be insanely jealous. I need her attention all of the time. I told her. I was like, I'm green with envy. When you're kissing on them, that should be me. I love her. Our year and a half anniversary is coming up and we'll be in Denver. And I got us this really cute stay. Um, and... I don't know. I'm just, I could cry. Oh my, not this. <laughs> um, you guys, <laughs> you're on the edge of your seat right now. I know because I know you never know where it's going. Um, but I really can't wait to like build a life together. It's like, I know I'll get respite from this dusty crusty really great. Carol's doing a number on me, my therapist. Um, when we're like retired, I want to retire like Pam Anderson. I want to live in a really green area with the vegetables all around, all around with my mans, with my Prince Charming. We play with gender and our pet names. Obviously we're queer. Um, so she loves it when I call her Prince Charming. Every night I say good night and she says good night gorgeous. We're really sweet to each other. It would make you it would make you nauseous. Okay, so okay. I know people are looking for funny embarrassing stories. Um okay, but okay, yeah, so there is that. So I, I chain smoked a pack of cigs. I felt great. I was born again a feminist. A born born initially a feminist at that moment in time. Anyways, um, one time I started my period in the front seat of this dude's, this dumbass DJ's car. I didn't have, I didn't have anything to help me. I had no underwear on, so I had to pull his shirt like a diaper up into my pussy parts to catch the period blood and then I cupped my hand on the outside again. I should have just left him with a pile of period blood and wiped it all over the seat in the windshield. This has to be some kind of primal thing where you just like want to wipe it. I don't know. It feels very like it feels very animalistic of me and I'm leaning in. 
Okay, but there is a lighter, funnier story or embarrassing story one time. Fourth of July, we're at the Boulder Reservoir, I think. I'm with a friend. You know, that's where I went to a small college because all really we could afford. I used to go to to school for four years exactly, become a nurse in four years exactly because that's all the allotment I had. Um... Okay, so so anyways, we're like – there's like a reservoir. We're like swimming in. We meet up with these guys. I had a big crush on this big beefy. I left those in the past. They're good for nothing. Um, I had st- – I got a busted lip somehow. I didn't know. We were drinking. We were on the seltzer. We were on the white claw. At that point, it could have been a four loco. What happened to the four loco? What happened to free Wi-Fi in your favorite coffee shop? What happened to punch cards? And what happened to Four Loco? The greatest things we have to live for. Ripped from us. Ripped from the tiny spaces within our little fingers. I don't know. I probably belly flopped too hard. I was fucking around. I was feeling good. And then I was hugging, I was hugging the big beefy, looking into his dreamy eyes and smiling. You know, you can imagine, you can imagine a big toothy smile, grinning, oxytocin flying. He goes, you have a bloody lip. Hmm? How was I supposed to know I wasn't? I wish I did. I was all around the water. I couldn't know. It's like, this is the universe. This is the universe ruining this precious moment for me. I open up my front facing camera. It's not just on my lip. It's all over my teeth. It looked like I just gargled from the cherry red Kool-Aid and swished it around in the front of my mouth. Stained blood everywhere. Red teeth, red mouth. I thought I was going in for the first French kissy. He was terrified he was going to get HIV AIDS, and I don't blame him. (sighs) Okay, so. You guys, I keep, okay. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get into astrology because, because we have been going on for a while, but I've wanted to talk about this for a long time. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to get to the gist of it. Okay. Okay. My chart, uh, I'm a. This is how this is how they say you learn about astrology, and I love nothing more to self indulge and learn learn more things about myself, so I can talk to it to, to the people who I love, who frankly just don't give a fuck, and that's perfectly fine. Please indulge me. I'm a Capricorn, Capricorn Sun, Aries Rising, Leo Moon. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Uh, I'm I'm really identifying. I Capricorn is the easiest for me. I feel like. That really comes out and all the other things like supplement, complement it. So you really have to take the full chart into consideration. Um, But yeah, the Capricorn in me is most easily identifiable. So let me read you some of my traits. (laughs) I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. I don't like you. I'm a Capricorn, I don't have to. I'm a Capricorn, I don't try to. That's pretty much me. But, but there are a few, I guess they're known for, for, only, for having strict boundaries. The second I learned what a boundary was, I implement, implement, implement. Arms length. Don't let anyone get too close. Unless we really build a rapport, it just takes me. And then once I'm loyal, I'm loyal as fuck. I'm lucky enough to have my closest friends for years. Um, I don't know. Like, it feels like, I, it fe- I do, it does feel like a good place to be. I don't, you guys, it's no secret, I don't love to travel. I like to be home. And I feel like it's easier to see my friends like that. And it just really makes me feel grounded. Um, yeah. 
obviously love Robbie and I'm very close to my family. So I'm loyal as fuck, basically. And and I I always come back. They're like they're quick to forgive. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. that could be my Leo moon. Cause apparently uh, apparent oh I have this really good quote about a Leo moon that naturally I saw on that really reliable source Reddit sorry this is my Aries rising see I get them confused I feel like they're kind of similar Aries is known to like have a short fuse I don't have a short fuse you kind of had to pressure me but then I pop the fuck off Robbie has this song about me I feel like you guys have heard it he, oh, she has bring that ass over here but she also has you better know you better know when to shut the fuck up and then I forget how it goes you better know when to shut the fuck up something about or my girl she'll pop your shit off you better know when to shut the fuck up cause she'll pop your shit off you better know when to shut the fuck up. Cause my girl, she'll pop your shit off. You, you better know. You better know. You better know when to shut the fuck up. Cause she will pop your shit off. Something like that. She, This is my Aries rising. Or it could be Leo Moon. But this is a really great quote. Uh, this, this woman is really great in prose. P R O S C. The rage is, I miss my Aries rising. The rage is buried deep, but when you bring it out, you have no hope of survival. Justice is swift. Me. Just know I've been building an argument, subconsciously or consciously, about the way I have been wronged. And if you press me, it's going to come out in a succinct and a pithy way. Pithy. Fuck, I fucked it up. Succinct and in a pithy way. I like that word. Uh, I'm trying to use it, obviously. It is going very medium. Um, oh, Aries rise. Oh, I'm like, what about my Capricorn? I think Capricorns are hard workers. I feel like they're money driven. They kind of keep you on track, which has always been true for me. Oh yeah, they're 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 like one of the older signs. So I think they're known to go through traumatic events. Uh, and that's where their boundaries come from. And it's like, this is something too that it's, oh my God, I completely forgot. I completely forgot the whole point. And it's like, and it's like men will mock you about being into astrology oh that useless piece of knowledge that's not science back one time my friend morgan big shout out to morgan was like yeah i believe in astrology it's controlled by the moons and the planets and the moons also control the tides it's science but it's like I don't use it as a form of therapy, but I just use it as a way of under understanding myself. And I don't know how it works or why it works like this, but it's like, it's like a lot of these, I don't know. It feels like the Capricorns are born in to the trauma. I don't know how that all works out. I don't really know how it can explain it, but it just gives you kind of, it just helps you understand we're all trying to reckon with this shit. Anyways, okay, but Capricorns are really sensitive on the inside, and that's so me. One thing also I love about Capricorns, I guess they're known they're known to look younger as they age. Hello, hello, thank fuck, Jesus. Um. Oh. 
Aries risings don't like to be told what to do. Me, me, I'm stubborn as hell, which I think is my Capricorn, and I will not be told what to do. It could be something so small, and I guess even my friends know this. They're like, if you do tell her something, she'll go the complete opposite way, which when we first started dating, Robbie had like a, a note of isms of mine because <laughs> I'd like sit her down and I'd be like, I don't like it when you order for me. I don't know why. I've seen it happen for other couples. And it's just like, one, you get my order wrong. Uh, Two, I don't mind ordering by myself. I have questions. I want to know what the best option is. So that was written down. And another one was like, do not suggest anything. Don't tell her what to do. I'm like, also so cute though, that she has like a notes app of like things that I like and don't like. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of my very minimal, not in-depth understanding of these astrological signs. There is a plethora, a wealth of knowledge out there. I'm just at the beginning. Also, do not, this is, do not take anything personally, okay? I love you all. If you're listening to the to this podcast, you're my best friends. You're my greatest support. I do not know what I'd do without you. This isn't personal. You have to take the whole chart into account. Cappers, Capricorns, boundaries, don't cross the lines. I don't make the rules. Aquarius, no clue. Maybe flighty, their air, or could be water. Honestly, don't know. I don't know a lot of them. I don't really talk to them. Pisces, better luck next time. Aries, a good time. Then we'll pop your shit off. Taurus, I really don't know. I feel like they kind of get a bad rap. I feel like they're very honest, but sounds like they can be playful. Gemini, scary and rare. Cancer, no bones in your face. Uh, emo, want you to read their emotions and feelings and respond accordingly. Leo, money, 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 luck and fame. Virgo, not really sure. I think they can be a lot of fun. Libra, Eminem, balance, chapel roan. Scorpio, no offense, maybe not, maybe the, the baseline understanding, our queen Sylvia was a Scorpio. Sagittarius, so fun. I feel like the fun, this, Robbie's a Sagittarius. Fun, witty, confrontational. Remember when I asked Robbie on our podcast if she thought she was confrontational and she said no? Literally in what world? But I don't think confrontational is a bad thing. Like I would love to get everything off my mind directly to the person. Like she's real, like she will shit talk to your face, which I think is the best kind. Okay, do what you want with that. I hope you had a great time. I hope you're having a good Thursday. On a Thursday? Uh, and I hope, and I hope you come back again and again. Until next time on Long Windered.